Section 2.6, limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. So what is this about? We would like to know as X approaches plus or minus infinity, where does the Y go to? That's what this lesson is about. Where does the Y go? Well, let's say, let's say here on the side, we have the graph of a function and we have a straight line like that. And there's a function F approaching this line. It shouldn't touch it or cross it. So the question to this as X approaches infinity, where does the Y go to? Well, <clears throat> infinity, what does that mean? Infinity, there's a plus infinity on the X axis, negative infinity on the X axis. So as X approaches infinity, so as we travel to the right side, where does the Y go? Means where is the function approaching? Well, in this case, call this A, that's the line Y equals A. So as, as we travel to the right side, the Y value is approaching A, Y approaching A. So we can say that Y equals A is a horizontal asymptote. Look at another example very quick. This is three, the graph goes up this way, down. So we would like to know as X approaches infinity, where does the Y go? And as X approaches negative infinity, where does the Y go? So as X approaches, this is the function F. As X goes toward this way, where is the graph approaching? Y is approaching what? Zero, right? Y is approaching the X axis, zero. So that's the X axis. And as X approaches negative infinity, as we go toward the negative infinity, where does the Y go? The Y is approaching three, Y is approaching three. From these two, we have Y equals zero and Y equals three, our horizontal asymptote. H A, a horizontal asymptote. So that motivates us to introduce <clears throat> introduce some definition. Let f be a function on the interval negative infinity to infinity or negative infinity to a if the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is l then we say y equals l is a horizontal asymptote. Same for the limit of fx as x approaches positive infinity is l on a infinity, then Y equals L is a horizontal asymptote. 
So in general, if the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of function is L, then automatically y equals L is a horizontal asymptote. One common application, the function y equals f of x equals 1 over x. So this is the graph of function. We use this a lot. We use this a lot when it comes to limits. So the limit of one over X as X approaches infinity. So the function for this is zero. And the limit of one over X as X approaches negative infinity is also zero. So we can say the number over infinity is zero. Also, as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the r, this is always 0. And if r is positive, is, is considered a rational number, so that x to the r is defined for all x. then the limit of 1 over x to the r as x approaches negative infinity is 0. After you finish that, we're going to go start looking at examples. 5x squared minus 11x plus 7 over 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. So how do we work with something like this? Generally speaking, there's many ways to solve this kind of problem. Uh, one of them is basically you can drop everything except the highest exponent so you can drop the 11x and 7 and from the bottom 3x plus 5 and it will work out nicely the other method is uh, you factor out the highest exponent on the top which is x squared that gives 5 minus 11 over x 7 over x squared and x squared here 2 plus 3 over x plus 5 over x squared. These cancel out. This goes to 0. This goes to 0. This goes to 0 based on what I just explained. And this goes to 0. So what is left? 5 over 2. So that y equals 5 over 2 is a horizontal asymptote. So it's important to show the steps and not just the answer. We are not looking for, for answers. We need steps. Try this one now. So now this one, we, we factor uh, x squared on the top. That will leave 1 over x minus 3. x squared here, 5 plus 1 over x minus 1 over x squared. 
these cancel. So when you pass the limit, you get 0 minus 3 over 5 plus 0 minus 0, negative 3 fifths. We have infinity now and radicals. So this should go to infinity over infinity, which is indeterminate. So the way I work these problems out, let me show you step by step. We factor the highest exponent out, which is x squared. Now leave 1 plus 9, 1 plus 9 over x squared. And here we factor an x out, 24 minus 25 over x. So now when we take the x squared out, it doesn't come out as an x. It comes outside as an absolute value of x. This is important to know. Keep this the same. Now, what is the absolute value of x? Absolute value of x is either, it, it's like a v-shape. If, if, if x is heading toward positive infinity, we use this branch which is y equals plus x. Negative infinity, y equals negative x. So since we are going toward positive infinity, we can drop the opposite value as a positive x. Twenty-four minus twenty-five over x. This equals the limit as x approaches infinity. These cancel out. When you pass the infinity and you go 1 plus 0 over 24 minus 0. So the answer is 1 over 24. Again, keep in mind 1 over 24 is a horizontal asymptote. Any questions about this? If no questions, I'm gonna I'm writing the, another one similar to that one so you guys can try it. Try this one. So we can go over it now. What do we have here is limit as x approaches negative infinity. Limit as x approaches negative infinity. We factor an x squared here, 2 plus 11 over x squared. Then Limit as x approaches negative infinity. Take an x squared as an absolute value. Now, that would be a negative x to drop an absolute value. Factor x, 5 plus 7 over x. These x cancels, so you get a negative square root of 2 on the top over 5. That's what is left. Now, it can come in a different format. For example, like limit as x approaches infinity of something like this. This one goes to infinity minus infinity, indeterminate. So the only way to come around this indeterminate form is to rationalize. Multiply by the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. On the top, you get the square of the first one over, keep the denominator the same. 
Next one is on the top, the square will cancel the radical. We get x squared plus 1 minus x squared. Here we can factor x squared out. That will leave 1 plus 1 over x squared. Take the x squared outside as an x because it's a positive infinity. Then look what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor an x out from the denominator. This goes to 0. And inside the bracket, we have 2. And outside, this, this is infinity. A number over infinity is 0. So the answer is 0. Another one similar to this one that I just finished. Try it now. Okay, so let's go over this one. Again, this takes step by step. You should write negative infinity plus infinity in determinate. It's good to, to write down the details. Now, the one way to do this is to multiply by the conjugate of this, which is x minus the square root of that over x minus the square root of this. Uh, now on the top we have x squared minus the second one squared and x minus we can factor x x squared right away x squared minus this is x squared plus 2x x minus take this out that this comes outside as a negative x, so that becomes positive x. Do you guys see what I did? It comes outside as a positive x. Then, on the top, the x squared cancels negative x squared. That will leave negative 2x. In the denominator, we can factor an x out. Do not combine these two x's together because of the order of operations. Okay, so that's how uh, we got it as negative 1. So y equals negative 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Anyone has any questions about this section?